Hi everyone, I wanted to make a, this uh, quick comparison video of these two calculators. So in case you are thinking about picking up uh, uh, either of these two, hope this video is going to help you make your decision. So on my left, I have the TI, I mean the HP 49G+, and on my right, I have the TI 89 Titanium. This one came out in 2003, and it was uh, the flagship of HP at the time. This one, on the other hand, came out uh, in 2004. So this was also uh, TI's flagship calculator at the time. Speed-wise, the HP is much, much, much faster than the TI 89 Titanium, almost five times faster. This one has a, a, a Samsung processor that is, uh, uh, that is clocked at 75 megahertz, and the TI has a Motorola processor that is clocked at only 16 megahertz. So when it comes to uh, operation, calculation, the HP is going to leave the TI in the dust. And the size, they are about the same size, but the 89 is a little bit, maybe two or three millimeter taller than the uh, HP, but you really won't be able to tell the difference. You know, they are about the same size, so that's something to keep in mind. And also the display. So as you can see the display here, so it looks like a HP uh, used a different coding for the display, which makes uh, the display on the HP a lot better, much better actually, especially in a darker room. It's easier to use the HP uh, compared to the TI. So let me go ahead and turn this on right now. So as you can see, they're both uh, flat on the table. You can uh, see that the HP display seems uh, more visible than the TI. The TI is uh, a little bit darker. You can play with the contrast, but it's just gonna, the HP is just going to be better than the TI for the most part, as you can see. You can adjust the contrast on the HP as well. I think it's gonna be the on key, plus or minus. Let's see. It's kind of hard to use this uh, behind the camera, but you get the idea though. Let's see, plus, yeah. So it's gonna be plus or minus to adjust the contracts on the HP as well. And when it comes to the keyboard, these calculators, they all have great keyboard for the most part. But my personal preference is going to be the HP keyboard because it is, it just feels sli slightly more premium than the TI. But don't get me wrong, the TI has great keyboards. As a matter of fact, I'm just gonna uh, get this out of the way. Till this day, the TI 89 Titanium remains my favorite calculator. That's because I'm a little biased when it comes to the 89 Titanium, this specific calculator, because it was my first graphing calculator. And uh, I've been using this, not this specific one, but I've been using the TI 89 Titanium for almost uh, eight years, for almost eight years now. So I know a lot about this calculator. I can easily make a one hour video just going over the feature of these calculators it is really packed with feature but the hp also has a lot of feature like way too many features okay so obviously both these calculators are graphing calculators but not only that they also have a, a cas so cas stands for computer algebra system so that means they can solve our, our equations you know, they have uh, the computer in them, so they can solve uh, linear equations, they can solve quadratic equations, polynomials, they can uh, factor uh, stuff, you can uh, simplify stuff. You know, it's really, it's, uh, they are really powerful. They are really, really powerful. So that's something to keep in mind. And also, it is really important to know that these are not going to be allowed on test in, I, can't, I cannot think of any college math courses that is going to allow you to use either of these two calculators during a test. You know, you may be able to use them uh, during, uh, during lectures, but on a test, you probably are going to be required to use uh, a TI-84 or TI-83, anything that, uh, that doesn't have a, 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 computer, a, com a computer algebra system in it. So yeah, because, you know, <laughs> If you were to use this on a test, especially on a multiple choice, uh, uh, multiple choice questions test, then it's gonna be you pretty, you pretty, you pretty much gonna be able to just put all the uh, problems in the calculator. It's just gonna solve it for you. So those of you might be wondering uh, that since the HP Prime, I mean since the HP 49G Plus and the HP 50G, 
look um, pretty much identical. What's the difference between the two? The truth is the 49G Plus and the 50G are literally the same thing, literally the same thing, just different color. And also the 50G has, the 50G takes four AAA batteries as opposed to uh, three AAA batteries here. But with that being said, they both have the same exact uh, software, I believe. And uh, they even have the same hardware, the keyboards, layout, everything is the same. You know, just different color. They have the same processor, so they are going to be equally fast. They have the same RAM. They also have uh, the same uh, flash memory, which is uh, two megabytes, and the RAM is 512 kilobytes. Speaking of RAM, I believe the 89 Titanium has a uh, 256 uh, kilobyte of RAM, and the flash is more than uh, the. 49G plus the flash is double I believe 4 megabyte of flash memory out of that 4 megabyte 2.7 is usable and here you have a uh, 2 megabyte of flash memory I'm not sure how much is going to be usable for that one okay so yeah that's there's that is that the HP prime is really meant to be used in RPN mode so okay so that's the biggest that's the biggest thing about the HP Prime. I mean, the HP 49G Plus. Forgive me, please. <laughs> I keep calling this HP Prime. I don't know why. <laughs> I guess the Prime is my favorite HP calculator. So there is that. But anyways, the HP 49G Plus is really meant to be used in RPN mode. So that's the thing. HP is known for their RP RPN mode. RPM, if you don't know what RPN is, it stands for Reverse Polish Notation. So it is uh, a way of doing a uh, math operation, you know, calculations and stuff. And this thing is really meant to be used in RPM mode. Even though it's got uh, algebraic mode, trust me. <laughs> if you try to use this in algebraic mode, even though you can, you are going to... It's, it's, it's really... Uh, it's really finicky, you know. I can't... I don't know what word to use, but this thing is really meant to be used in RPM mode. Even if you are trying to solve like a simple quadratic equation in algebraic mode, the calculator is going to give you some issues. You have to go through the settings, change some stuff, and you know, so that makes it a little more complicated to be used in RPM mode. And RPM is also, if you never used RPM before, learning RPM is not going to be as easy. <laughs> you know, it's not going to be very easy. So there is a learning curve when it comes to the HP calculator. I myself, I'm not a professional. Oh, I'm not a, I'm not a professional by any means. I'm not really good at using RPN, you know, but uh, I definitely will improve in that department. So for those who don't know what RPN is, so let me just go to the settings and show you really quick. So as you can see, I go, when I went to settings, the calculator is set to RPN, so you can change it to algebraic. So this is what most people are familiar with, algebraic. So that's this is algebraic, so you just put, uh, you know, whatever you want to calculate, you know, 5 times 6, that's algebraic, okay? If I change this to RPN, so on RPN mode, you have to put uh, the number, let's say you want to uh, do a multiplication of two numbers, let's say you want to do a 5 times 6, you know, so you first, let, uh, let me just clear this stuff. So you first need to uh, put the numbers you want to multiply on the stack. So 6 and 5. So now that you have these two numbers on your stack, then you hit multiplication. You know, since multiplication is commut commutative, I don't know if I'm using the proper word for that. Commutative, in French, we say commutative. That means 5 times 6 or 6 times 5 is going to be the same. So that's what RPM is for you. So RPM, you put uh, the numbers you want to multiply onto your stack and then you hit the multiplication sign okay and then it's gonna uh, do the multiplication for you same for division so let's say I want to do uh, 8 divided by uh, 3 so I put 8 on my stack I put 3 on the stack enter and division okay so let's do that one more time so another way to do that so you can I can put uh, 8 on my stack and put 3 I don't have to press uh, enter. I can just put three and hit uh, the division sign. It's just gonna do the operation really quick. So that's uh, RPN for you. And uh, HP is 
known for RPM. Unfortunately, TI does not have that. And RPM is really, really handy when it comes to certain stuff. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's really fast, you know. You, you, you are able to uh, do certain operations really fast in RPM mode as compared to uh, algebraic mode. So that is that. Texas Instrument does not make any calculator with uh, RPM. HP is the only one, at least here in the US. HP, well, I could be wrong. I believe there are other brands, but they are not as popular as either of these two. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, go through the settings of this calculator to show you what you get. So if you go to MOV, then uh, you have different options you can change. Uh, so the operating mode is in RPM right now. I can change, I can put it back to algebraic mode anytime I want. And this thing has a, uh, a lot of features it's got a lot of options you know and uh, this is region you can change it to degree you know or gradient so cancel here and uh, it also has uh, the beep function so if I check this key clicks press enter now you can see gotta make noise you know different noise you know but I prefer to have that off because it can get a little annoying as you can see so if you go to CAS computer algebra system so here you can change different settings in your CAS so this is what makes this thing uh, harder to use compared to the Texas instrument so TI just uh, has everything you know TI just simplify everything for you so you don't really need to you don't even have all these functions all these options on the TI calculator but HP gives you all these options and if you leave some of this check or uncheck, you know the calculator is not going to uh, it's not going to perform as you want it to perform. Even when solving uh, quadratic equations, if you have some of these features check or uncheck, it will not be able to solve equations for you. So that's uh, that, that uh, you probably gonna want to keep that in mind. You know, step by step. To be honest, I don't really know what all these mean. At least for now, I'm not really too familiar with this. This is my first HP calculator. And uh, yeah, so I'm, I have a lot of learning to do as well. So this video is not going to be in a specific order. It's just gonna be me ranting for the most part, really, because I'm not a pro when it comes to this calculator, really. So please keep that in mind. Okay, so let's see, let me cancel that. And if I go to display, as you can see, it even gives you the option to change your fonts so you can choose from three different fonts and you also have the ability to import your own fonts you could probably get some online so this one has some uh, uh, so, some uh, some program already so the person I purchased it from the person I buy this from I uh, installed some programs some of them all of them are really good I just don't need all of them so let's see so edit small indent stack textbook notation I guess display clock I guess this is where you want to have the clock at header analog if you want to have analog clock hmm okay looks like you can't even check that oh okay so this is what you use to check analog let me just click OK and see what you get so I'm not even oh okay so this is the clock right here it is an analog now so I can change back change that back to display clock uncheck analog and let me change this to one and see what we get okay what is the clock I'm not seeing the clock does this mean that hmm okay display clock two I'm just gonna leave it at two okay so it's got a date and time hmm 4 30 July 22nd that's about right okay so there is that and uh, you also have uh, your keys here your function keys you know and this thing has a uh, an equation writer so this thing is going to be used a lot by many so if you want to do a uh, if you want to solve let's say uh, an equations so you can there are several ways of doing that you know but my favorite way of doing it is going to be uh, by going in the equation writer so you press uh, this key right here uh, second key the right right second and this is going to be the less 
I mean the left second key so equation writer and here you can write your equations and uh, even the equation writer is a little uh, quirky so there's that to keep in mind so one thing that's really important to know is that let's say I'll, I'm just gonna do like a 2x square okay so you can't just put a minus if you do that it's gonna you know see it's gonna put that as, a, as an exponential exponent so if you want to add a if you want to do x square minus that's a minus whatever so there are several ways you can do you can either press the the uh, up button several times or you can just uh, press this red second and then up and it's gonna select the whole thing for you and you can put minus 3x or minus uh, 3x plus 2 and you want to set the whole thing to be equal to 0 as you can see equal to 0 and we are solving for x since we are in RPM mode I don't even think we need to do that you know so I can just press uh, let me just go ahead and copy this one so to do that you can just press this red key copy believe it or not I've uh, <laughs> it's, you know this thing because when you are used to uh, use the graphic calculator you know using these keys these functions are going to be really familiar to you even on the TI you know even though this is my first HP I haven't had it for long you know so all these things are just going to be self-explanatory as you can see so red copy so it's gonna copy the whole thing or if I want to cut it I can do that and paste it again so let's see if I press factor let's see what we get okay so this is the equation being factor so this is probably a complex equation that's why I don't have perfect zeros by perfect zeros I mean like let's say x plus 1 factor x plus 2 stuff like that okay huh. let's press this one more time you see this thing is uh, it's really interesting okay I'm trying to delete it select the whole thing okay I'm gonna paste it again let me press enter it put uh, it put on the stack for me so let me press this key that's gonna give me uh, options uh, uh, okay so I wanna do I wanna try to solve this one if I do that just solve it okay so it's giving me a bracket with empty zeros so I'm not really sure what this is but I'm pretty sure it has something to do with uh, the mod as you can see earlier under cast you have these all this stuff so let me just go and uncheck uh, some of these I'm not too sure what I have I have an idea but I'm not too sure what they really mean uh, let me uncheck complex constant blah, blah. okay let me do that okay let me uncheck everything except this one okay so now let me clear my stack Okay, so if you get this uh, uh, error and you, you don't know how to get rid of it, you can just press the on key and it's going to take you back to your uh, home. So let me go to the equation solver one more time and uh, paste, press enter. And now let me try and see if I can solve it. Because I got rid of all, the, all those extra features, options that were checked. Okay, solve error, too few argument. So when it says that, I probably need to set this equation to be equal to zero and on top of that I probably need to uh, specify what I want to solve for just like the TI I'm assuming what did I just do <laughs> okay let me just paste this so I'm gonna set the whole thing to be equal to zero and I want to solve for okay so I gotta select the whole thing and uh, I want to solve for x if I press enter let's see if uh, that's gonna make a difference let me just go back to the equation solver oh okay unfortunately it doesn't give me anything okay so let me try and see if I can solve this one five okay and solve okay function to new mode off let me press yes okay i'm still getting error so i'm pretty sure i probably just gotta go back to the settings and uh you know change some stuff 
but uh, this video is too long. This video, <laughs> it's already 20 minutes. I wasn't expecting that. I was going to make this video short, like 10, 15 minutes, no more than that. But we already uh, 20 minutes in, and I haven't even touched the titanium. Okay. So as you can see, this one has a uh, uh, this this one has some learning curve to it. You know, I've been using this for a long time, for seven plus years, and I still can't figure out how to solve an equation on this one because it is just. It's just too quirky, you know, it is really quirky. As you can see, you also have the ability to do 2D, 2D graphs. Let me see if that's easy to do. Okay, let me just exit the uh, RPN mode and uh, for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna go to algebraic mode, see if that's gonna make things slightly easier for me. So all I wanna do is uh, try and graph, okay, equation, Y, so I can add, I've never done this before, by the way. So let me just uh, do a simple quadratic equation. Or uh, se second degree polynomial. Okay, so press enter and uh, plot. I guess I can. Uh, okay, so it's gonna be the function key. I'm sorry, function key and then uh, F3. Okay, that was pretty quick. This is my first time doing doing a graph on this calculator. I've never done it before. So I see three, 2D, 3D option. Maybe I can change that to 3D. Okay, let me go to home. Hmm. Okay, I don't know why it won't let me do 3D graph. I guess I'm gonna have to figure that out as well. But as you can see, well, graphing wasn't as hard as. Okay, I was I was pressing the wrong second button. So 2D, let me see. Let me press enter here and see. Okay, that's not doing anything. Okay, how do I hmm. function polar parametric? These are okay. So fast 3D, let me select that. Okay, so if I go back to plot and I try to graph this, okay, now it's 3D. Okay, this is really interesting. That's good to know. Okay, this is really good. I did not, I did not think it was going to be this fast. So yeah, that's that, that's really good. I'm happy. You know, they. A, uh, the 89 titanium also has a 3d graphing but uh it's much much slower than this you know like i said uh, this one is nearly five times faster than the ti 89 titanium because it is it has a better processor really fast wow this is nice okay you can give okay or is, okay nice so let me just exit that really quick cancel that's good okay i can change this back to Instead of 3D, I can change it back to function, so I can just get you know simple function. Okay, if I go back to graph. Oh, okay, so it's graphing on top of it. Okay, interesting. That's good. Okay, but enough of that. So now the TI right here. So to show you how easy the TI is to use, uh, granted I've been using this for. Uh, seven plus years, so that gives me a lot of advantage for someone who is who, uh, compared to someone who's never used it before. But the reason why uh, TI Texas Instrument has no competition uh, in the school uh, market that's because of their software. I believe their calculators are easy to use, you know. Plus, you know, they are well built. But when it comes to speed, they are not the fastest. They are not the fastest, not by a long shot. They are really slow, as a matter of fact. I believe for the money people are paying, they are kind of taking advantage of our customers because they don't really have any, they don't have any real competition. If you go to a school, you know, if you go to a math classroom, a college algebra classroom, chances are that 10 out of 10 students have a TI calculator. You know, I've never seen anybody with an HP calculator at school. The only person I've seen with an HP calculator at school was... Uh, a professor, that's about it. Only one professor. Even all the other professors, math professors, they all have Texas Instrument because HP is really, you know, I don't know. I don't know. But, you know, that's 
that is that to keep in mind. That's really unfortunate. That's really, really unfortunate because I really would love to see these being used by more students. But the reason why they are not is because, you know, I, be, I think it has to do with the software, also marketing, you know, why not? But if I wanted to solve a simple quadratic equation, this I can do it in less than 20 seconds, even 15 seconds. So let me go to F2, solve, let's do x squared minus 2x plus 3, set it equal to 0, I'm solving for x, that's it. That's, that was like, what, 5 seconds and I'm getting forced, that means it is a complex, uh, uh, it's got a complex solution, so I'm just going to hit alpha, put c in front of it, that stands for complex, complex solve, press enter, and I've got my answers with imaginary numbers and real numbers. As you can see, that's how easy it is to use the TI. If I want to graph, press the diamond key, and just press x square and diamond key, F3. As you can see, it's really slow. Compared to the HP, it is slow. You know, I can do 3D graphing as well. If I want to do that, that's going to be under mod. And I'm just going to change the graph. Number one, that's the first thing. I'm just going to change the graph from function to 3D, as you can see. See, that's what I was saying earlier. So the TI display is is really, uh, the HP display is much better than the TI, as you can see. So there is no way you can change the font size on these things. So you, you are stuck with the size here. So change this to 3D, press enter. And uh, it's thinking about it. I don't know how long it's gonna take. I think I need to go back to the plots. Okay, there you go. And now I can just put X square, enter, and try to grab this one. Say busy. Okay. As you can see, the HP was much faster, but hey, they can both graph in 3D. As you can see, the TI is really slow. It's really, really slow because the processor is a slow processor. As you can see, but the HP was much better to look at compared to this one. Of course, you can you can you can play with uh, the zoom function here, zoom out. Zoom in, zoom out, zoom square, I mean zoom standard, zoom square as well. You know, we're not gonna mess with all those features right now. Okay, this is not meant to be like a, like a, like a review, it's just meant to be like an overview, really. You know, a rant, if you wanna call it, as you can see. So, okay, so there is that. So now, just like I did with uh, HP, I'm also gonna go ahead and show you uh, the stuff you get with this one. So when you first set this up, when you first open the box and turn it on, so it's gonna take you to this home screen. So as you can see, you have a, like a graphical user interface here. It's got different applications, you know, and home is where all the calculations are going to be done at. Okay, so if you're getting this for the first time, you don't know what to do, then uh, just go to home and that's where you can uh, just do all your calculation. You know, this one has, uh, this one is really quirky too. It's got a lot of features, like a ton of features. What made me fall in love with this calculator is that I would uh, I would I would use it for like a like uh, after using this for like uh, maybe two or three years after that I knew everything about it and then I I discovered little things that's you know little stuff you know it makes it really it makes you it makes you enjoy the calculator more you know so let's go back to app so you have numeric solver you know so there is that. And uh, you also have a program editor. So I actually wrote some programs on for this uh, uh, calculator, and the program worked for uh, the regular 89 and also the Voyage, and even the 92. Depends on how you make the program, of course. But yeah, so that is that. So this is how you make program here. Let's see. I just got a call. Okay, I'm glad the video didn't stop. Okay, so you can. Uh, do a new program and uh, you can choose whether you want to uh, make a new function or program so function the difference between function and program is that well you can do a lot more uh, in a program than you can with a function a function you when you make a function you usually are going to pass some uh, argument to the function and it's just gonna uh, uh, do some operation with a program you can you know it can be more complex as easy as uh, doing a simple operation adding two numbers and as complex as making like a like a like a video game here on this calculator actually you know so there is that you have uh, the y editor that's just the graphing you know it is uh, when you see z that means it is set to function and you can change that back to 
it is set to 3D. When you see Z, it is set to 3D function. That's when you see X and Y. Not X, Y. <laughs> okay. Okay, so yeah. So when you install new apps, this is where you would find the apps. Okay. And when you make programs for these uh, uh, calculators, you can find the program by going to Varling. So second key of Varling, and it's going to show you all the stuff. I think I wrote some stuff. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, so that is that. And if you go to mod, you're going to see different... See, I really need to get close to you, to the camera because this thing is so tiny. So as you can see, folder, the main folder, you can change, you can create a new folder. Here, display digit, you know, float. You have float, you have a fix too, I think. Yeah, fix, float. And uh, the angle is set to radian. You can change it to degree if you want. Okay, you have the option. And exponent format, scientific, scientific engineering. I just keep it to normal. Complex format, rectangular, polar, real are the options you have. Pretty print. Uh, pretty print is just a... Uh, so print print is like a uh, the textbook notation if you will okay okay why editor as you can see okay the language right now it's, it's called got one language you can download more languages and install them app desktop that's the app if you turn this off then uh, you are going to have a uh, the thing you had uh, with the uh, hp Calculator. Instead of having like a graphical user interface, you are going to have a list of apps and programs. Okay, so as you can see here, if you put a let's say uh, an operation seventy eight divided by seventy nine. Okay, uh, that's not what I wanted. Let me just do this really quick. Okay, as you can see, so if you were like a fraction like this, it's gonna make you look nicer. Nice, nice looking for you as you can see and uh, if I wanted to di okay so it divided by 3 so if you don't want to get the answer in fraction then you can press the diamond key and press enter and it's gonna give you an, an approximate as you can see so now you know okay so this thing is packed to feature I can't even like I said I can literally okay I'm, I'm already half an hour uh, in the video I can literally make a two hour video about this calculator easily, very easily. And I won't even see the time the time the time passing by. You know, this thing has a ton of features, brother. It's got so many stuff, you know. The catalog has different stuff too. So if you cannot find your functions that you're looking for, here is here's where you can find them in the catalog. Okay, I was using this earlier uh, to convert uh, temperatures and stuff. Temp converter and time convert so if you wanna let's say you wanna convert uh, let's say we wanna convert uh, 70 degrees Celsius so you put 70 first and uh, if you wanna find your uh, temperature you have to go to unit so second key three and constants you have temperature here Celsius so you press enter and you press uh, uh, the comma and you want to convert that to Fahrenheit. So let's go back to temperature and select Fahrenheit. Close the parentheses and press enter. And 70 degrees Celsius is 158 Fahrenheit. So yeah, there's that. This thing has a lot of features. I don't even know if uh, the uh, HP has uh, that feature to convert uh, temperature. But I mean, it would make sense that it does. You know, after all, it was, it was a flagship and they came around the same time, you know. But this thing can obviously do certain stuff that the HP cannot do, vice versa, you know. And uh, yeah, I really need to spend more time with the HP Prime to see, uh, especially to get comfortable with the RPN, you know, because this thing is really powerful. It is really powerful. The speed, the speed itself is what is what I, the speed alone is is the re reason why I love this calculator. You know, I don't know if I can see myself uh, use this as my daily driver. For now, that's going to be the TI-89. No matter how, no matter how fast the HP Prime was, the HP Prime is the fastest calculator on the market in the world. No matter how fast that was, it's just I just didn't get used to it. You know, I just prefer this the 89 titanium over the HP. Even the TI Inspire, I have all of them. I have the Inspire, CX, CS Cast, and I just you know I just find myself 
using the TI and titanium the, the most, you know, it's just, you know, if you, you know, if you like, if, if you like something, you just like it. You don't even need any, any explanation. It's, you know, it's just, the connection is just there, you know. So if you have any questions, just make sure you put them in the comment section. I, uh, I will do my best to get to them. Since I have the calculators, you know, I can just, uh, you know, I can just check what uh, the things you want me to do, things you wanted me to check, you know. And I believe I said this earlier in the video, this is essentially the same thing as the 50G. So the 50G for some reason is really, really expensive. I don't know why, I guess it is, <laughs> it was popular, it was popular. It's the most popular calculator, HP calculator, I believe. It was the most popular, popular HP calculator when it first came out. So I guess that is that. And uh, one reason for that is because I heard that when this one came out, the documentation was not that great. So, you know, it just fell through the crack. And uh, so HP, they decided to fix that. So when they launched the 50G, they, you know, they made a, like a proper documentation. You know, even the programming feature, both can do, both are programmable. So you can make programs on both of these. You know, as you can see here, I showed this early on the TI, but on the HP, let me go to home. So program, okay, so it's gonna be second program. Okay, so I don't even know how to make a new program on this. In, out, time, error, ran, and debug. Interesting. So if I go to run and debug, let's see what I get. Test, next. Let's see what else we got, nope, nothing. Okay, like I said, I got a long way to go when it comes to learning about this thing. But yeah, I'm really happy with it. So yeah, like I said, if you have any questions, yeah, just make sure you uh, put it in the comment section and I'll do my best to get to them. Okay, I haven't even done a simple operation here. So it is in algebraic mode. If I wanna do, let's say a square root of, uh, okay, square root of uh, eight. Okay, so on the TI, square root of eight, you know, it's more complete, more step. Eight, close the parentheses. Two square root two. Okay, so there is that. So that's computer algebraic system for you. I don't think uh, the TI eighty four can do this, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. You know, stuff like that. You know, simple operation. You know, simplifying operation. They are great when it comes to that. You know, they can uh, simplify really, really complex operations. You know, and uh, this thing can even do like a trick stuff. It can even solve trick problem for you. Uh, if I wanna do. If I want to see, uh, let's see, uh, cos square, cos uh, theta square. Okay, so as you can see, this is an identity, a trig identity. And uh, if I wanted to solve that one, I can just go to F2 algebra. And if I go to trig and trig expand and close the parentheses, Hmm. Okay, so I must be doing something wrong. Let me try that again. Let's see. Second. Maybe just expand. Not trick expand. Let's try it out. Hmm. Interesting. Trick expand won't work. Okay, if that is not going to work. But I believe there is a way. Let's see. Of course not. <laughs> Should I put X here? And theta? Not that it makes any difference, but you never know. You never know. Okay, so the TI is really uh, can be can be interesting at times. Okay, I'm glad this happens in real time, so you can see how fast or how quick you can uh, take a situation like this. <laughs> Trick collect. Okay. Hmm. Okay, if I wanna do a uh, 
a plus b square let's see if i wanted to expand that there you go this is what i'm talking about so both calculators can do this they should this one should be able to you know the hp should be able to so you know you have your identities you know remarkable identities so yeah that is that this video is 40 minutes damn well i'm out